in darkness they came. Their destination, the Games Academy somewhere out at sea. Their mission, to become games playing legends and to crack the challenge of Games Master. That. Right, we're going to take a break from the normal proceedings, i.e. we're not going to have the team championships this week. This week we've got three very special teams of celebrity panto stars. They're going to come in and play some challenges for us. They're going to be battling it out for the famous Games Master Golden Joystick. Hey! <laughs> right then, so without further ado, let's get on and meet our panto stars. Over this way. Yes, I'm King of the Rats and I hate all cats and I'm down at Croydon. Right, OK, thank you very much, King of the Rats. And my name's Chase and I ain't Mary and I'm in Croydon playing the fairy. Whoa, yeah. lovely. My name's Jack, I don't take no flat, but I'm happy to be on Game Master. <laughs> We're going to meet the Aladdin lot. The Aladdin lot from Woking. Step outside. We want to meet you. Here they come. So, are you all right in there, Bitch Woking? Bitch Woking. Could you tell us your name, please? Abanaza. And I'm Princess Balrubador. Oh, nice to meet you, Princess. Yes, well, it's very nice to meet thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Oh, thank you. Sorry, Edward. Aladdin. Aladdin himself. I am Aladdin. OK, then, well, let's have a big cheer for the Aladdin team. Yeah! Tell us your name. I am King Rat. Boo, hiss, boo. Boo, that's a bit more like it. Thank you very much. Get in the panto spirit. You got. I'm sorry, sir. Your name? I'm Richard Whittington. And I'm the captain of the ship. You are the captain. Oh, yes, I am the captain of the ship. Right, yeah. And where are you appearing, chaps? Uh, we're appearing to our bar. There's your old bar. Very good. In Dick Whittington. Right, we need to get on to the first challenge. Well, let's have a big cheer for the Dick Whittington team first, please. Yeah! Find out what's tonight's first challenge. I've selected cartoon favourite Yogi Bear for the Super Nintendo. Our contestants have one life and 45 seconds to collect as many clocks as possible while guiding Yogi through the slippery, snow-covered landscape of Jellystone Park. I'll award five points to the team which collects the most clocks. Two to the runners-up and zero to the losers. So, the game is Yogi Bear. With me is the Archangel, Dave Perry himself, the game guru. Doesn't he look lovely? Give us a twirl, Dave. I'll give you a flap of my wings. Go on, give him a cheer. <laughs> Didn't he look lovely? Yeah. We've got Robert up first from Dick Whittington of Bath. How well is he going to do at Yogi? Have we got any idea whatsoever? Well, Robert is playing King Rat. He's a nasty player. OK then, Robert. Good luck, you King Rat nasty kind of a geezer. And start your challenge! Yeah. The challenge is to collect clocks, don't forget. The Yogi can kill all the bad guys by jumping on their head. His energy bar is in the bottom right hand side of the screen. It's that cake. Every time he gets hit by a bad guy, he loses a slice of cake. And then why he's trying to jump up there to get a picnic basket when there's all those clocks down there just waiting to be collected. The clock number is in the left hand corner of the screen. That's how many clocks he's collected. Only ten so far. Come on, you can see. She's playing Fairy Bow Bell at Croydon. Dave, do we know anything about her skills as a computer game player? No, but we do know that when she turned up, she had nicer wings than me on her costumes. We've made her leave them outside, but we're hoping she's still going to work some magic she on this game. <laughs> she, she doesn't want her wings plucked, but good luck to you anyway, Lorraine. Off you go and start your challenge. Yeah, she's away. Yeah, yeah. she go on, Lorraine. Lorraine. Lorraine's a bit frustrated because she can't That's get the hang of on jumping on the basket. Well. We don't need to oh, oh. knocking around. And you don't need points for this challenge. You need clocks. 
Trevor's got 30. Nice one. 20 Doesn't seconds gone. That's 20 gone. seconds Took gone. a lot of energy away from the race. Ooh. Look at that cake in the bottom corner of the screen. She's going to die. Gone. That's the end of her challenge. That's the end of her challenge. Away he has got 13 clocks, not bad time. Next up is Graham. He's playing a lad in at Woking. Dave, has he got a chance? Well, Graham's quite a good games player. He's hogging the machine in practice. Oh, and yeah. we're hoping he's going to show us some real genius. OK, Graham. <laughs> Start your challenge, good luck, boy, boy, sir. Yeah. Okay, off he goes, he's throwing it down as well. We missed a couple of clocks back there. He's going the other way. Yes, there's a load good of clocks right there. And he's got eight clocks he wants early to on. He's already on the range he's tail. He's serious about his game's master challenge. Oh, unlucky. Yeah, he was hogging in practice, but he got up, very, very good. Big right, stokes well. are a bit nasty, or weasels, or whatever they are. Jumping on their heads, dealing with them, getting them out of the way. They're taking an awful lot of energy off him. Look out for him. He's only got two slides of cake left. He's got to deal with these stones. Keep going, Graham! Very well. There's the clocks he needs. Them clocks, There's four mate, clocks. Up. That's what he needs to go ahead of the rain. Four, yeah, four, ahead of the good three, four, two, two, one. Right. Stop the show! 14, 14 clocks. Not bad for Graham. Let's go to the scoreboard and see what the current standings are. OK, the Dick Whittingtons from Croydon, well, they didn't do too well, so they got zero on that last challenge. The Aladdins, well, they came in the second position, so they get two points. But the Dick Whittingtons from Bath are in the lead at the moment with a massive five points. Yeah. It's time to go home to the reviews, and it's going to be a very special Christmas kind of festive sort of review time. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. A list of great games in 1993 can't go without Street Fighter 2 in it. The Mega Drive conversion is the best of the bundle, and Super Nintendo owners should be more than happy with their Turbo Edition. It's the best beat em up there is, and everyone should have a copy. Well, apart from the obvious Street Fighter 2, my favourite sports game of the year is FIFA Soccer. It's brand new, but it is brilliant. My choice for 93 would be Zombies on the Super Nintendo. Why it appeals to me so much, I'm not sure. At first glance, it appears to be just another run of the mill overhead shoot em up but play for a while and you'll realise it's full of 50s B-movie tackiness. Bullfrog Syndicate on the Amiga gets my vote for one of the best games in 1993. It's incredible gameplay combined with an amazing 3D effect. It's just second to none. My choices for 93 best games for Christmas would be Sensible Soccer for the Mega Drive, long-awaited conversion, a brilliant game. Also, Claymates and Clay Fighters for the SNES. Unusual ones, I suppose, but superb characters and great action. A lot of laughs. Our reviewer's choice for 93. And now, our new Room of the Future competition. Here at the Games Masters Academy, we have all the latest and greatest gaming consoles. So we're going to give you a chance at home to get your hands on some goodies. Inside the Room of the Future are four of the most advanced bits of gaming equipment in the world. A Panasonic 3DO multiplayer, a Philips CDI Home Entertainment Centre with a digital video cartridge, the state-of-the-art Amiga CD32 and the incredible 64-bit Atari Jaguar. Now, here's how to enter the competition. Over the next few weeks, we'll be showing you three questions which will be hidden in confusion printing, which looks something like this. Now, the answer to each question will be a number, and if you string all three numbers together, you'll have a code that opens the door to the room of the future, giving you a chance to win one of those fabulous consoles. Before you can do that, though, you're going to have to decode the confusion printing. We'll show you how to do that later in the programme, so grab a pen and paper in the ad break and stand by. All right, then, we need to find out what tonight's second celebrity challenge is, so let's go over to the Games Master, see what it's going to be. For my next challenge, I've selected the very amusing platform game, Alfred Chicken, for the Super Nintendo. Our contestants have 45 seconds to collect as many diamonds as possible, avoiding the villainous clockwork mice and the numerous other toy town perils. Again, five points will be awarded to the team with the most diamonds, two for second place and zero for last. All right then, Dave, John Altman's up first, better known as Nick Cotton or nasty old King Rat. Is uh, Dick Whittington. Dave, tell us a bit about his game-playing prowess. Well, if you thought John was bad as nasty Nick, you should see him as King Rat. I don't want him to win. I don't think he'll win. No, I don't want him to win, so I want lots of booze from the audience, all right? Yeah, booze right there. OK, well, good luck to him anyway. Off you go, start your challenge. You've got one life, 45 seconds. Collect as many diamonds as you can. Off you go. The first thing John's going to have to do is for chickens to get on those springs, to get a nice bit of bounce to get to the platform so that he can get to those higher diamonds. But he doesn't want the most! Cast in his chest! Yes! yes. yes. Yeah. We don't like him. Well, it just goes to show you that being a baddie doesn't...
doesn't always pay off. No diamonds. It lasted about two seconds. Next up, we've got Ray. He's playing Ebenezer. Okay, in Aladdin. Dave, any idea as to what he might be doing for us this evening? Well, I don't really think he's been pitching over. He's gone from being off in home and away to being off for chicken. It's got to be a downward step for him. Okay, so be prepared to rattle that cage. Okay, then, good luck and start your challenge. Joffrey goes off with chicken. There's Alfred. He saw what John did. He knows he's got to bounce on those spring. It springs early on. Come a nice on, bit of bounce right. to get up to the place. higher platforms. And once he gets up there, he can get all those lovely diamonds because that's what the challenge is all about. Getting yeah, diamonds, collecting like. points because he's he awful, to, to be honest. He wants to get up there. He's, uh, is he that how over his eyes or what, then? He has to get many guys. He doesn't seem to be able to get up there. It's really easy. Just push over with a joy pad, Ray. There you go. He's on. He's got a couple of diamonds already. He's doing better than Ray, you wouldn't know it. He's got a peg up button there. A button there that says off. He's got a peg it to make it stay on so that the blocks become solid so we can go get the big diamonds. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's flying all over the place, but he's got the points to Johnny State. And that's it. He's dead. Diamonds 12. 12 points for Ray. Then Wayne Morris is up next. He's playing Ricardo Whittington. And he's the only goodie in our cast on this challenge. And we know at Christmas we like the good guys to win. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, no, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. Let's start the challenge. Off you go. Good luck. Yeah. Wonderful, the goodie one at Christmas. That's Spot what we like to see. Let's go to the scoreboard, see what the current standings are. OK, things ain't been going too well for the Dick Whittingtons from Croydon. They got none in the first challenge and none in this one. Makes a big zip on their scoreboard. Now, the Aladdins from Woking, they did a bit better in the first challenge. And quite well in the second one, they've got four overall, but way out in front. Are the Dick Whittingtons from Bath, they got five in the first challenge, five in the next challenge. That makes ten, I think. Let's chat with the losers. And they're going to be in for a lot of trouble tonight in the show. Yeah, really a lot of trouble for the show. Yeah. Well, good luck with the show. Thank you very much for coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. All right, yeah, let's have a big cheer for the Dick Whittington team from Croydon. Yeah. Okay. Right, we have to get the caretaker to take you away now. So where's the caretaker? There he is. Go on, take him out. Get rid of him. Got rid of them. No problem. Yeah, quite right, son. All right, then. Well, we've got two celebrity teams left. They're battling out for the fabulous games worth the golden joystick. All oh, sounds like a good prize. Not only that, we've got a smashing knockout celebrity challenge for you after the break. So don't go too far. See you in a sec. Bye. bunch of little adverts there for you. Right, now in true Games Master style, we'll have a celebrity challenge. And we never let you down on Games Master. We've got a big celebrity for you. It's going to be a very exciting challenge. Please go absolutely mental for the man himself, the one and only Santa Claus. Go on, go on. <laughs> Santa, has anyone ever told you you bear an uncanny resemblance to Frank Bruno? <laughs> you do, you do you look like Frank Bruno. Yeah! Uh, Santa, I, I don't suppose you've got a computer at home yourself, um, have you? The kids have, not me. No, yeah. the, 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 are you going to play a computer challenge for I'm us? I'm going to try. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to pick one of the kids out to play uh, a challenge against you? Who's I, your, who's I, your I think I picked my little girl, Nicola. All right, then, we won't say that's biased, but of course we'll have Nicola up here to play Frank. That's great. Come, Nick. Smile. Come on, Nick. Jump Relax, up here. Nick. <laughs> Come on, don't. Have you got a computer at home, Nick? Yes. You have? What you got? Uh, Super NES and Sega. Look after me, yeah. your friend. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Look after me as well. <laughs> Good. I'm sure she does. All right, then, let's go to the Games Master. Yeah. See what your challenge is going to be, yeah, Nick? Yeah. All right, then. Right, oi! Games Master! Our celebrity guest and his lovely young daughter will go head-to-head on the boxing simulation, greatest heavyweights for the Sega Mega Drive. 
As Mr. Bruno knows, and only too well, the accuracy and the number of punches landed will give you the upper hand. But the damage inflicted to your opponent's head and body will count the most. My golden joystick is waiting for a champion. Ding, ding! Well, it's a very festive game. It's the world's greatest heavyweights. We're going to see a bit of boxing action. What a surprise. Now, we've got Frank and Nicola. They're in the hot seat. Dave, what characters are they playing? Frank's going to be Joe Louis, the brown bomber. And Nicola's chosen to be Muhammad Ali. And she's going to have to fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee if she's going to catch Frank, because in practice, he was brutal. Right, well, there is brutal Frank Bruno up against his daughter, Nicola. Good luck to both of you. And start your challenge. Off you go. Good luck. Second up. Well, Nicola's on the left. She's Muhammad Ali in the red shorts. Frank's on the right. It's Joe Louis in the silver Let's shorts. Let's see what these two fighters can do. And at the moment, Nicola is pummeling her father. The energy bars to watch out for are on the bottom of the screen. The She's main red bars, serious. if they go completely black, oh, there's okay. no more red left, then you get knocked Come down. On, Nicola. If there isn't a knockdown in this fight, it's going to go to a referee's decision. The other two Knock bars that tell you how well they're both doing are the face and the body bars on the bottom. As you see the white bar, maybe down the face, look at Frank Bruno's face, Joe Louis' face. It's very, very low. He's taken a lot of head punishments. And that's going to dictate a ref's decision at the end if we don't get a knockout. We want to see a knockout. I think Nicola's going to be in a lot of trouble when she gets home because she's pummeling her father. The more Frank tries to get back into the fight, the more she lays into him, the more damage she's doing. It's going to come down. Oh, Frank Bruno with another chin. Two other chin. Couple of girls away. That's the end of the fight. No knockdowns. It seems that the judge's decision has gone Nicola's way, doesn't it, Dave? Why is that then? She was the more aggressive fighter. The judges like that. They've given her the fight. She had the bigger punch at the end of the day, basically, is what they're saying. So let's bring them both back on stage and award the prize. So, uh, Nicola, you didn't show your dad any mercy there, did you? Yeah. My nose can tell for that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's been squashed, splattered yeah. all over your face. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Thanks very much, Frank. <laughs> so I didn't mean to be rude. All right, then. Well, let's award the golden joystick to Nicola. Well done. Bring on the joystick. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good fun. Okay, then, right, we're going to nip off to the consultation zone, see if the game's master can help some people out. See you in a sec. Hello. Will the first people with desperate needs please come forward for some intensive tuition? Games master, I've heard there's an extra life hidden in a Mac on the Game Boy. Can you tell me where it is, please? On stage six, when you come to the rock foundation hanging from the ceiling, wait for about 10 seconds. Fruit will begin to appear and drop to the floor. Collect every piece of fruit and a bonus life will be yours for the taking. Thanks. Next. I can't get anywhere and super mad for the master system. Can you help me? I have just the thing. Enter ZAQ on the high score table. Now play the game. If things get a little too frantic for you, hold down both buttons and you'll be transported to the next level without expending any extra effort. Oh, thanks very much. I feel much better for getting all that off my chest. I'll be back. OK, now the game's master sorted out that usually sort in the consultation zone, we can get on with our final challenge. We've got two teams left. We've got Aladdin and Dick Whittington. So, the Dick Whittington team, how do you think you're going to do on this last challenge? We're going to win. You're going to win. There you have it from King Rat himself. And what do you think of this other team, then? What do, what do you think, Ebenezer? Rubbish. What? Absolute rubbish. We're going to win like we always win. Uh, well, they don't seem daunted by that at all. <laughs> Not done terribly well already. <laughs> <laughs> I did particularly well. He did particularly well there, have you know. Thank you very much. OK, let's go straight to the game's master. <laughs> See what the last challenge is going to be. For my final challenge, this Yuletide evening, I've chosen the very festive holiday lemmings for the Amiga. Hordes of mindless lemmings are plummeting to their death from a great height, and our guests must attempt to save them by attaching a tiny parachute to their backs. The contestant who saves the highest percentage of lemmings in 45 seconds will be our Christmas champions and the worthy winners of my golden joystick. OK then, Dave, tell us a little bit about Alison from Aladdin. She's going to be playing first. Well, it's not very often we get royalty on this show, but princess or no princess, if she wants one of our golden joysticks, she'd better do the business. All right then, good luck. Start your challenge. You've got 45 seconds to get as many levels done as you can. OK, off you go. And here come the lemmings dropping the out the track right at the top. What they've got to do is use the icons on the bottom. The icons selected now. It's an umbrella 
icon. It's a brawly icon, as Dexter said. And by clicking on the lemmings with that, they use them as parachutes, which stop them from flattening themselves as they fall off that cliff. You'll see quite a few of them coming to their death. At the bottom, as many lemmings do, of course. Not all lemmings are lucky enough to have a princess. Twenty-five seconds gone. Giving them brawlies. Twenty seconds to go. This is a time challenge. It is a time challenge. You've got to keep moving. Keep moving. That's keep right. And in the bottom on. left-hand corner, there's an icon with a plus sign on it. Gone. That speeds up the rate Let at which go. the lemmings are released out of that trap. Four. Four. Three. Three. Two. One. Stop the challenge. OK. Alison did pretty well there with Aladdin. She got 45%. Next up is Robin. He's captain of the ship. Dave, tell us a bit about his game playing prowess. Well, Robin was worried about this challenge. He's practiced more than anybody and he's become very good at it. He's only got 45% to beat, but I want to see him get about 75%, or we we'll talk to his producer and have him turned into the cabin boy. Start your challenge! Yeah. Here come the lemmings out of the trap door. Robin knows this game. There we go, he's got the first lemming. Give it in the brolly. He's got two lemmings. 100% record so far. And he's really, very, very good. He hasn't got a lot of lemmings to get to beat Alison. So it'll be nice in a minute once he knows the score's safe to see him open up that trap door. 20 seconds the plus sign on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. I really go for the full 100%. Now, it's brilliant. As close to it as he possibly can. Yes, he's doing really well. Doesn't look like it's any problem for him whatsoever. He's doing really, really well. Usually, very tricky games, Lemmings. This is quite a simple challenge, but it is a challenge that requires precise timing as those Lemmings pass through the crosshair. Princess, sorry. Yes. Sorry, you're being commiserated, I know. Obviously, I didn't win, but, you know, I had fun playing the game. You did, thank you I very much. I did have fun well, playing the game. Well, that's the main thing. And I hope we see you at Christmas. I'm sure you will. Thanks very much. Good luck with the show and okay. everything. Yes, thank you very much. So, Captain. Oh, Captain. Yes, matey. So, uh, matey. <laughs> matey. It all went yeah. all right for you there, didn't it? It certainly did. Hey, watch it, you. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Well, it went very well. It did? I had a shaking finger, but I was all right. <laughs> that means you won the fabulous games. What's the golden joystick? <laughs> Here we are in the Games Masters Workshop to show you how to read that confusion printing and answer the questions in our Room of the Future competition. The only way to decode the writing is by looking through something red. And young Daniel here doo -doo, is going to show you how to make your very own decoder. Grab a hold of anything shiny, plastic and see-through. This cup, for example, and then colour it in red. Just get an old plastic bottle or package and then cut round the bottom and then colour that in red. It'll do. You could even use cling film. Just get yourself a bit, then get a bit of cardboard, cut out a frame, stick the cling film onto the frame, then colour that in red. Of course, if you've got a bit of red cellophane hanging around, you could always use that. Alternatively, if that seems like too much hassle, you could always use one of these Games Master red monocle things. It's free with Games Master magazine, available everywhere, 195. Whatever you do, make sure you've got something red for next week's test question. The week after that, the competition starts for real. Good luck. Say goodbye, Daniel. Bye, Daniel.